we're back. My first guest is a war hero, United States senator, and best-selling author. His latest book is called Why Courage Matters, The Way to a Braver Life. Please welcome Senator John McCain. Glad to see you've got some Navy men here tonight. Those guys They're are back here every ship, night. Man. <laughs> back to ship, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is so much to talk to you about. There is, uh, first of all, a lot of speculation lately, is, and a rumor, speculation, uh, that you might uh, be a vice presidential candidate with John Kerry, form kind of a bipartisan uh, juggernaut. Any truth to that at all? Look, I spent several years in a North Vietnamese prison camp in the dark, fed with scraps. Mm -hmm. Do you think I want to do that all over again as Vice President <laughs> of the United States? Yeah, well, good job, the, vice, the Vice President has two duties. Yeah. One is to break a tie in case of a tie vote in the United States Senate comes and breaks a tie. Right. The other is to inquire daily as to the health of the President. Neither one of those are very challenging as compared to being able to live for a good part of the time in the state of Arizona. I'm sorry you missed insulting Arizona. You've insulted a good part of America just in the last few minutes. Uh, I even stuck a microphone up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's anyone left in the country I haven't offended, I apologize. We have a big drought in Arizona, as you know. There's so little water, the trees chase the dogs. It's really a very serious, uh, <laughs> a very serious situation. How's your stand-up career in the Poconos going? I'm just curious. <laughs> going well for you? Take my wife, please. Um, the, uh, <laughs> She doesn't like that one. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the, um, the president's... So you're saying there's no... I have to no. dispense with that. No, no. truth to that. Not you're not even tempted. chance in Gila Bend, Arizona. Okay. All right. Let's move on then. The president gave a speech the other night, talked about his five-point plan for uh, the transition of power in Iraq. And about Abu Ghraib. Well, this is the thing. Abu Ghraib. He said Abu Ghraib three times, and each time he pronounced it differently. Can you give us an insider's look on what's going on there? He said yabba dabba do, abble grabble. <laughs> three different prisons. Abu Dhabi. <laughs> three different prisons. Yeah. That could be it. Yeah, maybe that's it. There's a lot of prisons around here. Was he pronouncing them different ways in order to just, was there a sense of, uh, is, it, is, he, is he trying to appeal to different demographics that way? What's he doing? I think it's a way of keeping the attention of the audience, you know. How's he going to pronounce it next time? <laughs> I think it was, it had me riveted. I was... I'm in trouble. You, uh... Back you to the ship. Yeah, you support... Leave those men alone. They're having... <laughs> they don't need Senator John McCain yelling at them. What ship? Iwo Jima. Congratulations. A wonderful ship. Have you been the, on the that USS ship? Iwo Jima. Yes, it's a wonderful ship. It really is. Really? Yes. How is it different Amphibious. than other ships? What's the... Amphibious. I'm sorry, how is it different than other ships? Amphibious assault ship. And it carries a lot of helicopters and a lot of Marines. You get along real well with those Marines, don't you? Mm-hmm. And, uh... <laughs> Maybe you guys would like to talk alone, and I'll just leave. No. What is this? After, after... Yeah, there... Yeah, after, after television sets went off in Arkansas... <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, ...Alabama... People would rather watch. Jersey, uh, it, it, the, the, This is probably a better show. Late smaller. Night with Senator John McCain and Two Sailors <laughs> is probably a better show than Late Night with Conan O'Brien. You, uh, for all your jibing and jests and, and poking fun, you support President Bush's campaign. Yes, I do. For, for I support president. his re-election. I do. Is and he supporting you in your race in Arizona? Um, I'm sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I'm is he going to come by? Is he going to campaign for you? I think he's going to campaign for both of us. It's a battleground state. Very nice. Uh, anyone running against you in Arizona? I would think that would be a, a foolhardy mission, but is anyone running against you? I believe that there is a, an individual who has stated that he would like to do that, yes. Very I tactful of you to not to... <laughs> not, who is this person? You're not going to say their name. If I could remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. I apologize. I only, I only read Very well article. done. I only read an article in the paper. I promise yeah. the next time you'll have me on, I will give you his complete biography. I'm I know he's a high school teacher, which yeah. is a very honorable profession. Okay. I think you've saved yourself on this one. I know he's a fine man. Um, or a woman. Uh, 
I know he's a man. <laughs> Let's talk about something. Um, I, I think a lot of people in this country, and I'm one of them, believe that 9-11 that, uh, that and, and the aftermath of 9-11 is not really a partisan issue. That, uh, and I feel that way. I think a lot of people do. But do you, are you surprised that no one has lost their job in the day? days of 9-11. You know, that, that, that no one has been held accountable, no one's been told, all right, yes, this is a mistake that could have happened under any administration, but you, you, and you have to go. I think that after we hear the results of the 9-11 Commission, then, then a problem, and they'll be reporting out, I think, in July, that the people should be held responsible. And maybe nobody is responsible. But uh, I think they've done a pretty good job, this 9-11 Commission, and mm -hmm. I look forward to their conclusions and recommendations. If you were in charge right now, would George Tenet still have his job? Do you think he should go? <laughs> CIA director? Uh, I don't know him that well. Uh, I think that he has enjoys the confidence of the President of the United States. Seriously, he enjoys the confidence of the President, mm -hmm. and that's very important for a director of intelligence. So I, I think it's up to President Bush. Okay. Um, I don't... Look, there were failures, and we all know them, and over time, someone has to be held responsible, besides just saying, I'm responsible. Something, actually, there has to be consequences. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I want to make sure that we talk about your book. Uh, I love this book, Why Courage Matters, and I think I could recommend this book to anybody, even if they only read the first chapter, uh, which you could probably do in a bookstore without even buying it. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Forget I said that. <laughs> buy it and then read the chapter and return it. No, kidding. Um, I'm kidding because it really is a fantastic book, but the, the first chapter, and I, I don't think we have time to go into it. I don't even want to give anything too much away in the book, but you're talking about heroism in this book, and the first chapter is Roy, about a... Uh, Roy Benavides, uh, uh, Special Forces, uh, Vietnam. His comrades are surrounded. He jumps on a helicopter. He gets shot, stabbed. Uh, he, he picks him up, gets in a helicopter, the next helicopter crashes. It's an incredible story of it incredible goes on heroism. For, yeah. Ronald Reagan, when he gave him the Congressional Medal of Honor, said if they made a movie out of this, no one would believe it. I mean, it's just Which incredible. is true. You, this, the, the exploits of this one man, you read about it. If you saw it in a Schwarzenegger no film or a Stallone it. film, you would say that was way overdone. And, yet, uh, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of amazing stories in this book. Mm -hmm. People and, shouldn't uh, be scared. Well, that, and that's a big point of your book, which uh, you talk about in addressing 9-11. You believe we got to, in your words, I think you say, suck it up, go out there, and live your life, enjoy your life. And remember that fear isn't uh, a failing. Fear is, it can be a cause of courage. When we overcome fear, we can be courageous. Yeah, we wrote it because 9-11, when people were afraid to fly on airplanes, afraid to go shopping, duct taping their homes. It gets a little warm in Arizona when you do that. And right, right. So uh, <clears throat> it, it's, it's all about that and why you can have a braver life and a happier life. And you've got to pass it on to your kids. Okay. Why Courage Matters, the way to a braver life, uh, is in stores right now. You know what? It's always a thrill when you're on the program. Honor to have you here. Thank you. Senator John McCain, George Lopez coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stick around. Thanks.